What's going on, my fellow anglers out there in the world? This is Mark, Waist Deep Weight Fishing, Southwest Florida. Hope everyone is having a blessed day and everything that your heart desires comes to your path. So I want to say thank you again, and I always put this out there. If it wasn't for the subscribers and the people that contribute to Waist Deep Weight Fishing, Southwest Florida, I would not be able to do this. So my hat. It is off to you. Love you all. Um, I've been getting nothing but good responses and positive, excuse me, positivity that is being sent towards me and what I do. So I want to thank you guys again. I want to jump right into this topic, but before I do so, I do want to put this out there. It is very important that if you do like the channel and you find my content useful, please hit the subscribe button hit the notification bell so you can be up to date and YouTube will let you know when my newest videos come out. This way you get the first jump on seeing what I do, how I do it, why I do it. And hopefully that helps you become a better angler and that's the ultimate goal. So today we're gonna jump right into it and we're gonna start this off on a good note. How do we fish a grass flat while wade fishing when the fish won't bite. I'm going to put out six different tips that are going to help you be a more productive angler on a grass flat, okay, when the fish aren't biting. What you're going to need to do, what you're going to need to look for, and how that's going to help you get those lines tight. So number one, one of the most important things you want to look for, of course, would be tide. Now, there's different situations in the winter, there's different situations in the summer. Today, we're gonna to speak of summer tides. It's summertime, so I'm gonna make this video that's catering to what's going on now. Summer, you're on the grass flat, you're wade fishing, you don't have a boat, you don't have a kayak, you're stuck on one flat, okay? Now, you probably have been there before, you may have not. Hopefully you've done your research, like I've said from other videos, and you look for the spots of where the, the, the fish should be. So you check out those first spots, you know, as soon as you get there, but nothing is biting. Well, the first thing you wanna look for is tide. When is the water going to be moving the most? That is when you want to get there. Okay, so if you get there a little early and the water isn't moving and you get to your spots and nothing is being productive, wait. Okay, take your time, put in your time, be patient. Okay, pick a day that you know you're going to have moving water, whether it's moving in and out of a creek, moving up against a mangrove, moving over a pothole, or moving over a grass bed. It is essential to have moving water, whether you're going for tarpon, whether you're going for snook, redfish, or sea trap. Tip number two, water clarity. Now, if you've done your research and you understand uh, how fish like to live, um, redfish, you know, they, they, they can do the dirty water. It's okay, you know, if it's a little muddy, um, a little silty, they'll be there. They don't like it as much as they would like a little bit of uh, clarity and oxygenated water, but they'll be around. Now, if you're hunting specifically trout on this flat or um, you know, on an oyster bed, if you have dirty, silty water and you don't see grass around, the trout are not going to be there. Okay, So you're wasting your time. So with that tip, if you are hunting trout, look for grass, look for potholes, look for drop-offs, look for changes in the topography where these fish can hunt. And most important, you're looking for clear, non-silted water. If the water's tannic, that's fine. But if it's full of silt and it's choppy and it's just you can tell when you get in the water that it just doesn't look like an environment that the fish are going to be in. 
Well, if that whole flat is covered, I would suggest going to a different flat or changing your direction, moving from maybe trout to throwing against the mangroves for snook and redfish. Number three, super important. What type of bait is moving in and out of that flat or across that flat during the summer season? Do you see a lot of mullet? Is there a lot of pinfish? Are there a lot of greenbacks or what they call white bait? Okay, you need to do your homework. Uh, in order for you to be successful when those fish aren't biting, you need to find out what bait they're chasing after and what they're consistently eating in this time of type of year, excuse me, this time of year. So if you see that there's a lot of, let's say, pinfish, um, you know, on the grass flat and you don't see many greenbacks, well, then you might want to try something in a pinfish pattern um, to throw for these trout. If you see a lot of greenbacks and you don't see any pinfish, well, then you might want to try something in a green uh, a greenback pattern. Now, also on top of that, if you see nothing but greenbacks, you may want to throw something that is a contrast to that. If you see tons and tons of silver in, in white bait with a green back and they're just everywhere, well, then maybe you want to throw something in a hot pink color, in a chartreuse color, whether it be a soft plastic, a hard bait, a spoon, um, something that's going to stand out in that clear water that's going to make it easier for that trout or that snook or that redfish to find. Tip number four. Again, very, very, very important. And, and this is one that a lot of people, they just don't realize, okay? It's fishing. It's called fishing for a reason, okay? Yes watch your trends and sometimes the fish are supposed to be there but fish move so if you get to the flat and you cannot find the fish there's there's a couple of factors a the water isn't moving enough b the direction of the wind is not in your favor c you're not throwing something that's appetizing for them and four, they just may not have arrived or they're there and they haven't began to feed. So you have to put those things all into factor. So, you know, the bottom line is be patient. Put your time in. Use the knowledge that I give you from my videos or from wherever you've learned how to fish inshore, whether it be on a kayak, a flats boat, or waiting, and put your time in. Hit the spots you're supposed to hit. Factor number five. And this one, again, <laughs> it's another one that a lot of people do not understand and do not use, and it's a shame. Don't use heavy duty equipment, okay? Heavy equipment, um, you know, heavy braid, heavy leader, all these factors, you know, all those things that you use okay will spook skittish fish on a flat remember you're fishing in one to three or four foot of water okay and if the clarity is good you want to be as far away from these potholes and and grass flats and oyster bars okay because they can sense that you're there the more movement in the water they can feel that okay so you want to use a leader a light leader you want to use a light braid use your drag you don't need a five, six thousand size reel, okay? Twenty five hundred to three thousand is perfectly fine, especially if you're using it, you know, in the Shimano or Daiwa class where you've got twenty pound uh, of drag. Use your drag system, okay? Let that drag work for you. Use a very light leader, okay? You want to go, you know, I wouldn't go any lighter than fifteen pound, but I wouldn't go any heavier than twenty five pound. Use a good floral carbon leader. Okay, the smaller the leader, the less resistance in the water, therefore the fish can't feel that. And if they feel it, and they feel that it isn't right and something that shouldn't be there, they're going to spook off. And last but not least, the sixth tip. And again, another important tip. Okay, you're wade fishing, you're on one flat, 
You've made your, you've done your research, you've followed your trends, okay? And this is this goes out for someone that has been on this flat before, and even if you haven't been on the, on the flat before, okay? You can't find a fish, everything you're throwing at them, it, they're just not biting. Move. Walk around. Don't be lazy. Explore, okay? Just because the fish was at this spot a week ago and you pulled five, or you pulled five or ten redfish and three or four trout and a snook at this particular oyster bar or this particular drop off or this particular ledge doesn't mean they're going to be there. Explore the water. That's the whole goal, goal and why I am so successful okay, at weight fishing. It's because I'm constantly moving. I'm not sitting in one spot. I'm using my body. I'm you know, getting healthy, I'm walking the flat, and I'm seeing and using other options on that flat. Doesn't mean, oh, on this whole flat, there's gonna be nothing to catch. There's gonna be fish moving. If you put all of these factors together and use them the way I tell you to, you will be able to find fish. And you may not find fish the first five minutes you're there. It may take you two or three hours. But if you put in the time and the patience and use your body, okay, as a tool, and actually stalk and hunt down these flats and learn them, you'll be able and continue to go back to this, these flats day in and day out and consistently catch redfish, snook, sea trout, tarpon, black drum, and cobia. It all depends on what type of season you're in, what type of baits on the water, wind direction, color of the bait. Um, how you're moving across the flat, the flat, those are all factors. So keep that all in mind the next time you're out on the flat. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. This is your boy, Mark, Waste Deep Weight Fishing. I love you all. You're gonna see some new um, videos here coming up in the next few weeks. Uh, I've got some little surprises I'm gonna be putting out there for our locals and for our people that aren't here because you're gonna be able to use this information anywhere in the inshore saltwater fishery. Thank you very much, and I will see you on the next video.